Over the course of two and a half years on this channel, I've analyzed some of the highest yielding investments that are available to investors. We've looked at equity-linked notes issued by Credit Suisse, which offer yields upwards of over 30%. We've also looked at various CLO funds like OFS Credit Company and Eagle Point Credit Company, which offer yields between 15 and 25%. Not to mention various other holdings that use options in order to boost income for shareholders. Because I'm always on the hunt for higher yielding investments, I regularly get comments from people who bring to my attention new funds and new stocks that come with very high dividend yields. Just recently, I was made aware over on our Discord channel of a new fund that just launched back in November, and it touts a really impressive dividend yield. According to this ETF's website, it currently offers an outrageously high dividend yield of 75.59%. This would make it probably the highest yielding ETF I've ever come across in all my years of dividend and income investing. In addition, this fund also pays monthly distributions as opposed to quarterly, which makes it even more appealing. So in today's video, we're going to take a deep look at this fund, and we're going to try to determine if this dividend holding might actually be worth considering for your own personal portfolio. Let's get into it. The fund we're taking a look at today is the Yield Max TSLA Option Income Strategy ETF, which is ticker symbol TSLY. The Yield Max TSLA Option Income Strategy ETF is an actively managed fund that seeks to generate monthly income by selling and writing synthetic call options on Tesla stock. TSLY pursues a strategy that aims to harvest compelling yields while retaining cap participation in the price gains of TSLA. The fund's primary objective is to seek current income, and then secondly is to seek exposure to the share price of the common stock of Tesla, and is subject to a limit on potential investment gains. According to this fund's website, TSLY currently offers a huge dividend yield of 75.59%, although it does have this disclaimer below it. It says, The current yield is the annual yield an investor would receive if the most recent declared distribution, which includes option income, remained the same going forward. The current yield is calculated by multiplying an ETF's distribution per share by 12 and dividing the resulting amount by the ETF's most recent NAV. The current yield represents a single distribution from the ETF and does not represent its total return. The 30-day SEC yield represents net investment income, which excludes options income earned by such ETF over the 30-day period ended 3-31-2023, expressed as an annual percentage rate based on such ETF share price at the end of the 30-day period. All yield max ETFs have a gross expense ratio of 0.99% and distributions are not guaranteed. So that 75.59% dividend yield might not actually be accurate because funds that use covered call options pay a varying amount in dividends each month. It can be a lot more in one month and a lot less the next month. So there's no guarantee in the following months that the dividends are going to be as high as they have been up to this point. But this still makes it one of the highest yielding investments I've ever come across. I've seen stocks that claim to have an outrageously high dividend yield, but if you look at their dividend distribution history, you can see the reason why it's so high. Usually the stock will have an extremely irregular dividend distribution, which completely throws off the yield that the website's reporting. Here's an example of a stock that has a really high dividend yield according to Seeking Alpha. If you look at the dividend history though, you can see it recently paid a dividend, but it was a really one-off kind of event. It didn't pay a dividend for years before this, and I don't know why it decided to pay this dividend amount in particular. But many of the stocks and funds that people point out to me have this kind of situation going on. But TSLY is an actual legitimate monthly paying ETF. The company behind this fund is called Yieldmax. Their ugly website doesn't offer much in terms of their backstory or who's on their team. You'd have to read the prospectus in order to get an idea of who those people are. It says the parent company of Yieldmax is a company called Elevate Shares, which describes itself as being a platform founded by ETF industry veterans as a means for new and existing ETF issuers to launch leveraged funds. Who on earth are these industry veterans? Your guess is pretty much as good as mine. Their website consists of only this homepage, as well as links to their Yieldmax funds. You can see this company has two other funds available, which are the Yieldmax Innovative Option Income Strategy ETF, ticker OARK, and the Yieldmax AAPL Option Income Strategy ETF, ticker APLY. OARK follows the exact same strategy as TSLY, except instead of Tesla, this fund follows a synthetic covered call strategy on Kathy Wood's ARK ETF, and ALPY does the same thing for Apple stock. ALPY just launched two weeks ago, and they haven't announced their first dividend yet, but OARK currently offers an insane 41.66% yield. In fact, on the first page of this fund's prospectus, they actually have a whole list of funds that they're apparently planning on launching for a bunch of other stocks, including Berkshire Hathaway, Amazon, Coinbase, and Netflix. So it'll be interesting to see how all of these ultra-high-yielding funds perform once they take off. Out of all these, I'm probably the most interested in the Berkshire Hathaway fund whenever that becomes available. 
But getting back to TSLY, like I've just mentioned, they do follow a covered call strategy. This might bring to mind Global X's covered call funds like QYLD, RYLD, and XYLD, and maybe JEPY and DEVO that also use covered calls. These covered call ETFs basically follow this format. The ETF will buy all the equities in a specific index or only some of the stocks in an index if it's an actively managed fund like JEPI. The fund will then sell options to a counterparty that'll expire in one month and a premium is received in exchange for the sale of these options. Then each month, the fund will distribute a portion of the income received to its shareholders. Things like market volatility can impact the amount of each month's dividend distributions. But TSLY and Yieldmax's other funds do this a little differently. If you recall in this fund's description, it says it follows a synthetic covered call strategy. This fund's prospectus clarifies what the difference is, which is that a traditional covered call fund will use a strategy where the fund sells a call option on an underlying security that it owns. But with a synthetic covered call strategy, the fund actually doesn't own the underlying security, but rather seeks to synthetically replicate 100% of the price movements of the underlying security through the use of various investing instruments. In other words, TSLY doesn't actually own any shares of Tesla, and owning TSLY doesn't mean that you're an investor of Tesla. If you want more information on how this process works, you can read the prospectus on their website, but unlike JEPI and QYLD, which own the underlying equities they're writing options on, TSLY doesn't. But just like with other covered call funds, the amount of upside in share price you'll experience is going to be limited, but you'll feel the full force of share price declines. Because other covered call funds invest in either a large group of stocks or an entire index, this makes them much more diversified and thus safer. With TSLY, you're placing your bet on one company, which is Tesla, and that they'll be able to continue to grow going forward. So if you're going to invest in TSLY, you need to be absolutely confident about Tesla's future. I won't go into detail on Tesla because I just don't know enough about the EV market in the automotive industry to really do an in-depth analysis of it. It can be a pretty controversial stock because I know there are plenty of die-hard fans of this company out there. If we compare TSLA with TSLY, we can see their share prices act in a very similar way to each other. You can see that TSLY is down over 36% compared to Tesla's 31.69%. During periods when Tesla stock is rising, then TSLY will actually rise with it, but not at the same rate. When it falls though, it mirrors it pretty closely. If you're curious about how these dividends impact its performance, if you invested $10,000 both into Tesla and TSLY, you can see that you'd be down on both investments compared to when TSLY launched. But you'd be slightly down a little more in TSLY than if you actually bought Tesla stock. I know it's only been about 6 months and there hasn't been enough time yet though. A good dividend snowball would take a lot more time to develop than what we've seen so far. Since TSLY's launch, it's already down over 38%, which isn't great, but again, Tesla's a stock that's also been down quite a bit during this same time. During this time, as the share price was going down, the dividend distribution amounts have also been going down. You can see in this fund's first four months of dividends, it paid 99.86 cents in their first month, 90.29 cents in the second, 90.23 in the third, and 82.86 in their most recent month. It is actively managed, and as previously mentioned, it does carry an expense ratio of 0.99%. This is probably about average for an actively managed ETF. When you have someone who's using options, then it usually comes with a higher expense ratio. So ultimately, is TSLY a good dividend investment? That completely depends on your faith in Tesla. If you believe Tesla is going to conquer the auto market and we're all going to be driving their electric vehicles soon, then it would make sense to invest in TSLY if that's what you believe. I'm not as optimistic about Tesla's long-term performance, so this isn't something that I personally consider for myself. But like I said, I am curious about their Berkshire Hathaway ETF whenever that comes out. Over the long term, that stock's done really well and that would be more appealing to me. Remember though, even though this is an ETF, it is not a diversified holding. You're only investing in one company, so if you do decide to put money into it, then you shouldn't allocate as much money to it as an ETF that would be broadly diversified. But with that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video. If you're interested, feel free to check out my Patreon where you'll find an Excel sheet of all of my holdings updated monthly. Plus it'll give you access to our Discord channel where we discuss higher yielding types of investments. With that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video. If you liked what you saw, then feel free to hit that like button below and click subscribe if you want to see higher yielding investing strategy content. Again, thank you all so much for watching today's video and until next time, take care.